and demonstrate how to install a DIY skylight kit, probably one of the easiest kits you can put in. We have a few tools here, nothing that you wouldn't find in your DIY garage. I've got my drill and my grinder, which I'm going to use to cut some tiles if I need to. My hand saw, my plaster saw for my cuts. I've got my knife, my gloves for my safety, uh, earmuffs and safety glasses, tape measure and pencil, a hammer for knocking anything out of the way, and then I've got the gear itself uh, for making installation and my silicon gun for sealing down the flashing onto the tiles. I've selected this area to my right for the place I'm going to install my dome. It's going to be the easiest area for me to make my installation and keep in mind that the tube I attach is flexible so I've got a fair bit of room to move as far as where I put the dome as to where the skylight internally ends up. To install the dome I'm going to need to take out at least a tile and a half which means I'm going to have to cut one of my tiles to make it fit nicely. I've taken a few tiles out here now so I can see that the batten inside here, the batten that the tiles sit on, will need to be cut. I'll also need to cut some of the tiles around the base of it to get the 300mm skylight in there nice and neatly. Now that I've got the tiles off and I've exposed the batten, I'm going to put the dome back on and mark the tile batten where I want to cut it. So this part of the dome will fit down into that opening. I've now cut the battens so I know there's no obstructions for the skylight once I tuck it underneath those top tiles. You can see to the left, I've got a bit of a gap there still. I'm going to have to cut a tile down the middle and slide that in. I've got my grinder with my diamond blade in it. I've got all my safety gear as well. You may notice at the top there where some of my top tiles are, a lot of the pointing is starting to come away. That's because we're moving it around a fair bit. Don't panic too much. Get everything installed as it needs to be. You may have to do a little bit of repointing on the top of the ridge once you've finished and packed everything up. My next step will be to fit two tiles back in the bottom here, but I may need to cut a slight wedge in the top of the two tiles that go in there so they fit in. I've sat one tile back in there now. You can notice that the batten isn't in there. That's not gonna be a great concern for us because we're gonna cut all that tile off. The batten that I need is gonna to be to the left and to the right of those tiles. I've now marked my tile. I'm gonna make a cut along that line leaving a little bit of that corner tile in there so it still attaches to the tile on the side. I've now got my two tiles cut. I can fit those in, check for a final fit. If everything fits in, I can then fit the dome down. Okay, before I install the dome, I need to install the mylar tube on the back of it. So I just basically pull the tube over the outer flashing of the back side of the dome and then with the silver tape, tape it down. Make sure it's all well stuck down. Make sure you run your hand right around it. Once you've gone right around with your tape, cut the excess off, put it to one side because you need it for downstairs when you do your skylight inside. So you can see on the flashing it's marked at the top. That's the side that has to go up to the highest part of the ridge. So that's the part I'm now going to stick up underneath those top tiles and let the tube that's now attached to the back of the dome hang down in the ceiling space and then I'll be able to retrieve it when I cut my hole in my plaster. Now that I've got it tucked up underneath, that forms part of the main waterproofing component. I've now put some silicon underneath the sides. I've cut the, the silicon tube and I've cut the tip on the end of it. Don't be frightened to use a fair bit of this stuff compared to getting back up on your roof and fixing a leak later on. It's reasonably cheap, so you know, in this instance, get it underneath, more is better. I'm now going to use a hammer to just slowly profile that flashing down to the tile and that way the flashing will sit down onto the silicon and seal it up nicely. So now that I've beaten that flashing down to follow the contour and the profile of the roof, I'm just going to touch up a few more bits of silicon down the sides to make sure that I do have it well and truly sealed. We now go downstairs and put the light skylight into the room that we want to down below and extend that tube down below onto that skylight and we're all finished. I've selected this area above us here. It is going to be a little bit easy for us here because I can see where our screw joints are, so I can see where our ceiling joists are. So I'm going to measure across the width of my ceiling here. Okay. 
I'm now going to put a centre line here and then mark out with the skylight how, how big my hole is. The beauty of this diffuser is I can use it as a template for the hole that I want to cut in the ceiling. I need around 310 mil, that's the diameter of the diffuser. I need it to be reasonably close to the exterior fit. Now I've got myself a circle. I'll run my keyhole saw around that. It's also worth noting before you do make your cut, when you've got your hole up in your, in your tiles that you can see down and make sure that you've got no plumbing pipes or electrical cables in the way before you commit to making your cut. If you do, you're gonna have to pick another spot or move your cables on your plumbing. Now that I've pulled the tube through the ceiling, I'm happy that it's the right length. I don't need to trim it at all. The next stage is to fit the template up there for the diffuser. Screw it all the way through. Screwing just into the plaster alone isn't going to be enough to secure that. So I use the plastic tab that came with it. Put that over the top of the screw. So I can, there's a hole in it that's over the top of the screw now. I continue to tighten that up. That pulls that plastic tab down and makes a nice firm fit. Put the screw caps over the screws. It can be a bit tricky. Make sure you've got them pushed in there right all the way in. Now that I've got my screw caps in, I can pull the tube down inside. And what I've got to do is just tape it off with the silver tape inside the template. So I'll go around now carefully and start taping that in. This is the last bit to put the diffuser in. And what you need to do is you need to bend it a little bit, put it up inside the, uh, the template and then drop it back down. Once you've got the diffuser in, it does sit up a little bit. It, there's four tabs inside there. It's designed so it can be taken out and cleaned. You may get a few bugs and bits and pieces on this from time to time, but it also creates a little bit of airflow just to keep the air exchanging so you don't get any condensation or anything else that building up inside. So to increase some sunlight into the darker rooms of your house, that's how you install the skylight. Oh,